you, Roberto, for that uh, introduction. And thanks to everyone for uh, inviting me for this distinguished lecture. Uh, this topic of uh, randomized shell sort is uh, something that will be appearing next January uh, at the uh, SOTA conference. Uh, uh, but today I'm going to try to keep this on uh, not too technical a level, uh, since it's a general audience uh, for computer science. So I'd like to start, indeed, by um, reviewing the shell sort algorithm. The shell sort algorithm was uh, published in July of 1959, so we just uh, celebrated its 50th anniversary. Uh, and indeed, uh, this paper is being dedicated to my parents in the celebration of their 50th wedding anniversary, uh, which will happen during the month of so uh, next January. Uh, the algorithm is very simple to uh, specify at a meta level. This is actually, shell sort in some sense is a whole family of algorithms. Uh, not just a specific one, uh, and it goes as follows. Given a set of offset values, um, what you want to compute for each offset is to sort a subsequence of the array uh, made up of elements that are exactly that offset apart. And you can use insertion sort or some other means uh, to do that uh, sorting process. And what I'd like to... Um, try to do here is to illustrate this with a video I picked up off of <coughs> YouTube. Like this. So what this uh, video is showing is how uh, shell sort will work first with sequences of length 9. So it's doing uh, intervals of length 9, uh, offsets of length 9, and, and doing insertion sort for uh, each of those. Then it does uh, increments of length 3 in this instance. Then after it's going to be done with these uh, offsets of length 3, then we'll turn to offsets of length 1. Now another thing I want you to try to uh, visualize, at least during this uh, sorting process, is that another way to visualize what's going on is we could be thinking of regions of length equal to these offsets, and we're applying the identity transformation from one region to the next and doing the uh, comparisons with the items that are lined up according to this identity uh, permutation. It's almost done. So that is the shell sort uh, algorithm. Again, it's just uh, turned 50 years old. So that's kind of cool. Uh, our field is now uh, mature. Let's go back to the top. And indeed, this is uh, an excerpt from that, that paper. It's only three pages off. One of the uh, interesting things of, of, that came about from this algorithm since then is that people have uh, dedicated a considerable amount of uh, research attention to the study of ways of optimizing this algorithm. And in particular, for looking at uh, various kinds of shells uh, of, of offsets that would result in uh, good running times. If you just use the powers of two that were in the shell's original paper, you'll get a running time that's sort of n squared, nothing fancy. Uh, but actually, if you just bring that down to use uh, one less than powers of two, you get an n of three halves running time. Uh, Cedric shows how you can get down to n of the four thirds uh, using a little more fancy uh, offsets. And then Pratt shows that if you use offsets that are all products of powers of 2 and 3, you actually can get a running time down to n times log squared. Well, but it was an open problem for many, many years. Actually, it's still an open problem in some sense for deterministic shell sort, how you could possibly beat uh, order n log squared n. And then recently there was a lower bound that says if you have deterministic uh, shell sort, you cannot beat n log squared n over log log n. So the only hope to try to get this down to be an optimized uh, n log n running time for this uh, shell sort algorithm is to introduce randomization, which is what uh, I'm going to do in this time. But that was not indeed my uh, original motivation for studying this problem. My original motivation for studying this problem was to uh, try to design a sorting algorithm that was data oblivious. And I'll give you some motivation for that in a minute. But just start with a definition for what is a data oblivious algorithm. It's an algorithm whose operations do not depend on input values, other than through black box components, small uh, primitive operations. So for example, if you had a black box for add, 
to add two numbers, it's fairly easy to come up with a oblivious algorithm for summing n numbers. Just apply this black box uniformly to uh, the numbers or even in a hierarchical fashion. Uh, similarly for sorting, the black box that we're going to focus on is the so-called compare exchange operation. In the compare exchange operation, you have two inputs, an x and a y, and then what comes out on one is the min, and the other is the mass of those two. We are not allowed at all to have any if statements, for loops, while loops, or array index calculations that depend on the data. So for example, we can't even have a for loop that would, or an if statement that would say compare is min equal to x after you've done this use of the compare exchange. You have to do these compare exchange operations in a way that is completely independent of the values of the input. Okay? Uh, the original motivation for stu studying uh, these oblivious calculations was that having an oblivious algorithm uh, gives you a means to construct uh, a hardware implementation much easier than if you had a non-oblivious uh, version. So converting your algorithm uh, into a chip that then would be running in some kind of a computer uh, would then be an easier computation. So what I try to do here is to try to illustrate uh, what people were thinking about back in 1959. Uh, so I googled 1959 computer and came up with this image which is supposedly Rand's Corporation's uh, 1959 vision of what would be a home computer. <laughs> In fact, this is a internet hoax. Uh, this is actually a submarine navigation room <laughs> that somebody used Photoshop to pretend it was this classic. <laughs> but oblivious algorithms really were previously motivated by interest in producing hardware implementations of things. Uh, and if you want a real life a 1959 era computer. Uh, here's an example of the IBM 7030, uh, IBM's first transistorized supercomputer. It had a 64 bit word size. Uh, it could process 1.2 million instructions per second. I think this guy beats that today. Um, originally priced at $13.5 million, which would be roughly almost $100 million in today. Uh, but eventually it was reduced down to the bargain basement price of uh, just under $8 million. So they didn't sell too many things, even at that price. But it, it, it enters an era, right, of computing using transistors <coughs> instead of uh, vacuum tubes, which we owe our whole discipline to in some sense. Let me instead focus on what was my motivation, why I cared about trying to study sorting from a data oblivious <coughs> fashion, uh, and that is now this application to uh, computer privacy uh, issues. So there's um, this paradigm that comes from the computer security literature uh, that know, is known as secure multi-party computations. And, and in a nutshell, this is the one slide sort of summary of uh, this area. That is Alice and Bob, two entities, I uh, want to compute some function, f of x, y, where Alice owns x and Bob owns y. These could be sets, these could be uh, numbers, they could be uh, anything. And they both want to keep their respective values or sets uh, secret to the extent that is possible. And indeed, there's uh, a number of uh, protocols that are being developed nowadays using cryptography. It is possible for them to both learn the value of f of x, y without either one of them revealing uh, their private data. So Bob does not learn y, uh, or yeah, Bob does not learn x, and A does not learn, Alice does not learn y. But in order for this to be done, the computation of f of x, y must be done obliviously. This is the key property. That in order to compute that function so that during the algorithm, simply because you took a certain branch of an if statement that could be telling, you know, leaking information to either Alice or Bob. We must not have any if statements, for loops, array indices,